Hi and welcome to BXM Expeditions map reading session where we're going to be learning about grid references and how to take a grid reference and how to use one of these effectively, a compass. Now we're not going to be learning about taking bearings in this session or anything like that, we're literally going to be learning about what the national grid is and how we take a grid reference, a six figure grid reference and a four figure grid reference. We're very lucky in the UK, I've just bent down to pick up this map here. This is an ordnance survey map. This is a 1 to 25,000 scale map, which is exactly what I've got behind me here. You can buy various different types of scales. You can buy 1 to 50,000 where the, the, uh, the squares are much smaller than this, but they have to fit the same amount of things in. So it's not quite as detailed. So the bigger the scale, so 1 to 25,000 is obviously a bigger scale than 1 to 50,000 the more detail you get inside the squares. The squares are what I'm about to talk about. These blue squares here, which you'll see on every map, they're blue fine lines, horizontal and vertical. They are our national grid. And one of the reasons we're so lucky in the UK is because we have this national grid and it, it, it scales right down to these uh, one kilometer squares. So these squares are one kilometers wide and one kilometre high if you want to look at the map like that. Um, so one kilometre, a thousand metres, which is great for our navigation because we can really narrow down exactly where we are on a map. Now the reason I've got this compass here is because on a compass you will see the top corner here, the numbers go backwards along the top and they go down and we, we call this a Roma chart. Now you'll see that um, this one here, the top one is the uh, 1 to 25,000 and the one below it is 1 to 50,000. So you can see that from 1 zero there to 1 is the length of the squares on the map that I'm about to show you. So we can use this to point, pinpoint exactly where we are and we can put the corner of, of our compass on it and we can use that to, to, to take our grid reference. And that's something we do with you at a later stage, but that's just pointing out exactly why that is on the compass. So we're going to crack on and we're going to have a little look at how to take a grid reference without using a compass, just using our eyes. So this here, what we're looking at is our grid that we're going to be focusing on. And the reason we're going to focus on this grid for now is that this grid um, has got our numbers going up and our numbers going along. So just to say what these are called, the proper terminology for this is the numbers going along are our Eastings and the numbers going up are our Northings. These numbers here are what we use to take and um, to ascertain our grid reference. So this grid here is 8020. So this grid here is 8020. Now I am writing on a map and what's uh, this is quite a useful little tip if you use a permanent marker on a laminated map which is what this is it will rub off using nail varnish remover, meths, petrol that sort of thing. So this is 8020. Now that's a four figure grid reference, that's four figures. And how I've done that is I've used my Eastings first, so you'll often hear the phrase along the corridor and up the stairs. So I've gone along and I can see it says 80 there, 20 there. So that square is 8020. If I was to look at um, the square below it, this one here would still be 80, but it would be 19. So this square here is 8019. Okay, so you can see I've gone a bit further north on the map now, and we're going to be looking at this square here. So because I've just gone north on the map, the, the Eastings we're still looking at is 8-0, but we're now looking at 3-0. So eight, this square here is a four-figure grid reference, is 8-0-3-0. That's our four-figure. But what we're trying to establish is how we try and tell, so where, tell somebody we're at this point here, right in the middle of the square. So what we need to do is we need to break down this square into much smaller squares in our mind. So for, the, for, the, for this training purpose, I'm actually going to be breaking down this square. So I'm going to draw a line here and a line here, exactly in the middle. And I'm going to call that five and this one five as well. 
These blue lines here are always going to be zero. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, well, if I was to just go a tenth up this line, this would be a one. And if I was a tenth down this line, this would be a nine. And along here, the same on our east, on our um, east things, oh, sorry, on our north things line, one, nine. And then if you haven't guessed already, I'm going to fill in these gaps. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Along one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now this is obviously not exact, but it's it's pretty much how you would how how you would do this out on the hill in the field or wherever you were. So this point here, you can see it's by that five and it's by that five. So our grid reference here, going along the corridor and up the stairs, is eight zero five eight zero five three zero five. So if I wanted to tell somebody I was down here on this corner of this boundary here, I would go along the corridor, 8-0, and then line it up with these ones here. It's just past one, so it's probably two. So we're going to go for 8-0-2, and going up, 3-0-1, 3-0-1. So this is really simple. And how I imagine this is when I was at primary school and I used to do times tables, we had that this grid of squares um, where we had 100 numbers and that's effectively what you're doing in this space and you would do this wherever you were you just break it up in your mind and you know it might only be approximate to sit on some things it might be your in between and if you're in between well some people say you should always round up some people say you should always round down so I'll tell you what wherever you go as long as you're fairly close I don't think anyone's going to mind unless you're on some sort of mountain leader training or assessment, in which case that would be a different issue. Now I'm just going to explain this Roma chart again while I've got this up and the compass in front of me. If you remember I was talking about the compass having these lines going backwards across. Now if I was to line this compass up on this path corner here, I'll circle it. We, remember we're using the end um, Roma chart. Now, we go along first. We know this line is 8, 0. And if we come down, it comes down to about, it's not quite where 4 is. In fact, it's in between 3 and 4. So it doesn't matter. Let's go for, th let's go for 3 or 4. So this one would be 8, 0, 3. Or if you wanted to round up, 8, 0, 4. And going up, it would be 3, 0. And it's just about on number 9. It's definitely closer to number 9 there. 309. And that's how we use a Roma chart. So this is a very quick, effective way of saying, okay, I'm in the square here, I'm on that number and that number, and coming up with a six-figure grid reference. This is really important initially for when you're planning your route. It will then become more important for you when you start to look at um, the wider picture and you start to think, okay, well, I'm here by this boundary or I'm, I'm at this place or that place. It also becomes very important in an emergency. If you had to phone somebody and tell somebody where you were and you were at a, a significant point, maybe a phone box, you could tell them what phone box you were at by using your grid references. This is a really, really important skill to learn. And to be honest with you, you'll never really get a hold of it until you practice. So what I suggest is if you get your maps and you have a look at places and you try and just practice testing each other saying what's that grid reference what's that grid reference and collaborating and, and working together to make sure that you are effective with your grid references so good luck with that